Hi, my name is Amy and I make things. In today's video, I'm making burp cloth specifically. So hang around and let's see how it went. friend of mine and I'm using thrifted jeans, cotton batting, and some rubber coffin flannels that I had cut for a past project that never materialized. These are some Tommy Hilfiger mustard jeans that I got for $8.99. My kid was sorely disappointed that they didn't fit them. I purchased handmade bias tape. It's all over Etsy. I'll never make bias tape again. Here I'm cutting the jeans and some jeans have an open seam and you can snip and rip through one of the sides and that opens them up very easily. I'll show you later. Some have a surged seam and it's closed and you have to just cut the whole seam out. Either way, you just clip it and it's not a big deal. try to cut as close to the seams as possible so I can get as much usable fabric as possible. Here I'm just trying to see which colors match and I prefer. There's that surged seam. You just have to cut the whole thing out. Here I am strategically placing them. And trying to, I want that seam to be seen. I want to use it, but I don't want it to be in my way. base is all it takes and then iron it from both sides so it's less sticky when you're sewing. For anyone who has a note about spray based and babies is temporary and it washes out. Again, working with that seam. I want to use it, but I don't want it in my way. regular weight thread in the bobbin and that's 12 weight cotton thread. I was marking it just by looking at it but that got tiresome so I got the blue tape. a heavyweight denim needle, very sharp needle with a large eye for that 12 weight thread. Matching up the bias binding. 
than I prefer, and then attaching them. And here you'll see me change my machine foot in a minute to use the quarter inch foot. Go slow here and make sure that you're getting everything right to the edge of the curve and using the, the stretch of the bias binding when you go around those curves. I start mine with a folded edge, fold that raw edge over, and you'll see here in a minute we'll push in. Zoom in so you can see how I finish. I just sew right over it. Right there. Super easy. Here I'm just pressing for a clean edge across the front. I don't worry too much about the fold. And, it, and turning it to the back, I'm going to turn it over and fold it by hand and hand, hand applique it down to the back. This is the clean edge I'm looking for when I'm pressing. There's the hand binding tools, my thimble and my 80 weight threads. Here I am making my little signature applique holes. Red and white dots. They go on everything I make. I'm using the Eleanor Burns or Lori Holt method. And that's a lightweight fusible interfacing because that's what I have. And I'll sew it and trim it and then flip it inside out and applique it to the back. Oh, thread jam. which makes it great when you're doing applique. When you're in needle down position and you stop sewing, it lifts the presser foot just an eighth of an inch. Here I am trimming, and then I'll seam rip the backing, just the backing open, and turn these little tiny things inside out. Be sure and clip your curves and your points so there's no bulk in those. I'll link Lori and Eleanor's method down below. So I think burp cloths and everyday things should be beautiful. It makes doing mundane tasks seem less so. That's where I caught the binding and instead of going back and undoing it, I just embroidered over it. I hope you found that entertaining and a little bit educational. Anyway, here are the burp cloths all finished up and washed so they got the nice quilty crinkle. And there's the applique heart on the back. Goes through the wash on dryer, no problem. So you tell me in the comments below, do you think burp cloths and useful everyday things can and should be beautiful? Don't forget to go make the world beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy.
and I'll see you next time.